There are so many families and individuals that are impacted with breast cancer, but where it was personal for women's basketball nationally it was Coach Kay Yao at North Carolina State. Legendary coach, unbelievable human being, and she fought a really valiant fight on several occasions. When she lost that battle, one of the things that the NCAA really wanted to do was to have a game that would honor her to preserve her legacy, but also to just allow people through basketball to support people that are fighting the fight and also to honor those that maybe had lost their battle. And we always talk to our players about, you know, play for yourself, play for your team, play for your family. But in many cases, play for our fans that have their own stories that are very compelling. When I was a child, I sold magazine subscriptions so that I could get a basketball. We had a hoop in the backyard. I've been a Spartan fan forever. We also go to hockey games. My preference is basketball, so my husband's is hockey, but we like both. And my parents were longtime supporters of, of the basketball and, and volleyball, too. They went to a lot of those games. I had been up scrapbooking for a weekend with my sisters, came home, and it was time for my monthly um, check, self-exam. Found a lump and immediately called my doctor, and they very quickly got me in sent me through the next few tests and um, I think right after Thanksgiving in 2012, I think it was November 26th, I got the diagnosis. The one thing I did feel was because it was Christmas time, am I going to have another Christmas? And I think that was the only negative thought I had and I kind of got past that because we were so busy. You know, I can't change it, so don't dwell on the past, um, just look forward and and get the treatment and get rid of it. Within three weeks, I think on December 13th, I started all my treatment. I had some tests beforehand, had a port put in, and then began, began the chemotherapy. I started with chemo and then had surgery after chemo and followed by radiation last summer. I, had, I bought a wig when I lost my hair. I had my husband shave it off, so it was gone because it became a nuisance. So I thought, no, nah, this wig isn't really comfortable. So I started wearing, getting hats, looking for different hats. My friends gave me hats. I had a sock monkey hat. I had a bear hat, obviously Michigan State hats, and, and some furry ones with um, bright colors. And I one time wore a, a bright teal furry hat that I had. I wore it to church one Sunday, not thinking that I was really going to stand out. And one little girl said, you look like a clown. You need a big red nose. And I said, well, that's true. And another little boy just laughed when he saw the bright color. So it, it kind of, it's not a fun time, but it made it more tolerable. And I, I was always looking for different hats. I think the, the biggest thing for me, I think, is to be positive. You know, it's a really scary, scary thing because it, it is so prevalent now. And, but I think if you, look, and I told my niece this when she was diagnosed at 42, that this is, look forward, you'll get through it. You have all sorts of support. You have family support, friends, um, everywhere. I got cards every day. It's just, when you have that kind of support, it makes it much more easy to get through it. But it is, it's not, it's not an easy time. Um, there are ups and downs, uh, but just keep going forward. It was right before I was due for a mammogram, so it would have been found, but it could have been, you know, six months before, and if I hadn't found it, it would have been much further. And I think that's really important for women to do, no matter what age you are, start early and, and do that. Do your self-check and do your regular mammograms too. weekends around women's college basketball. It is a think pink weekend. Play for K is what it's called. K Yao, legendary coach of the women's game. It's a great way to celebrate survivors first. I mean, certainly there's people that have had tremendous loss, and those are 
those are things that are tough, no question. But to be able to celebrate some of the successes that we've had to raise money and awareness so that we can continue to have more survivors is a good thing. For us, I think there's just a lot of emotions that run through that game, you know, besides it being the competitive piece and usually a high energy game and a, and a challenging game. I think when you put that pink on, you realize it's bigger than just that. And there's so many people out there that you know, aren't fighting for a loose ball, they're fighting for their lives, and there's a big difference. Top of the key for the left wing pick, roll down to the left baseline, power. She drives in, goes up, and banks it off the window. Went right around Doris Moore, and Powers is on the board for the first time. Alston in too deep, tries to force it up, bounces it off the bottom of the backboard, and the Spartans have the rebound. Numbers. Bell into the front court, handoff to Pickrell, who lays it in from the far left block. Back to Pickrell on the near side. She lobs it to the left block, caught by Mills, lays it up and in. Athletic snag by Mills, and a beautiful pass by Annalise Pickrell. They do inbound, Pickrell to Jankoska, catch and shoot, deep three, and it's good! Nothing but that from Jankoska. My goodness! Seven to shoot, Jankoska drives into the free throw line, out to Mills, tries a three, that's good. Powers into the front court, to the lane, floats it up, it's good. Double team has to get rid of it, and she does to Jankoska in the far right corner. Quick touch pass down the high, and she goes up, pestered by Ferguson, but finds a way to get it up and in off the glass. Sparks. Deep into the bench. Morrissey with the basketball, drives in up with the right hand, and lays it home. And as usual, that gets the bench up onto their feet for MSU. Four different players reach double figures for MSU, led by 17 from Annalise Pickrell and Becca Mills each. I think I've gotten more confident, at least I feel so far I've been more confident. Um, I've been working on my ball handling skills a lot this summer and my... I don't know, I was really excited for like this season and especially like where I left off last year. How much I was scoring and how well I was playing defense and everything and, and coming into this year, you know, just starting with an injury that just was not going to go away the whole entire season, I was not expecting that at all. It's been really hard, and it's just something that like I have to deal with and uh, can't do as much as I did last year, like shooting-wise and working on my game, that type of stuff. So it's really been a mental season for me this year, and it's been interesting. But I'm really excited about where our team's at. What it says about her is a whole lot. I mean, toughness and character and the drive that she has to play through the pain. I mean, most kids would just shut it down and be done and can't do it. And there's days I'm sure she is in so much pain she feels like that. But she's one of the toughest kids I've ever coached. She's, for four straight years, have never stepped out of the drill, a practice. I don't care what the situation is or was, this is the first time that she's ever had to do it. And it's mostly we're making her do it because that kid does not sit down on her own. I think the most rewarding thing would probably be not giving up in times when it's been really hard and you're just confused and the reward being that I got a chance to start and I made the most out of that and I've been starting ever since that time and just knowing that hard work really does pay off. Um, it might not happen when you want it to, like I thought I worked really hard my freshman summer coming in here or my sophomore summer right before my sophomore season. It just takes a while for it to pay off, but it will pay off in the end, and so I definitely think that was like one of the more rewarding things. The part that probably frustrates Clarissa the most is she's been our lockdown defender and is very good now still, even through the injuries. I mean, that is, she has to guard the team's best player. The first half big steal by Clarissa Bell. Well, and Clarissa Bell is gonna take ownership of defending Maggie Lucas. She certainly wants to be locked down defender on her. She wants to keep Maggie Lucas uncomfortable and she can do She's that. very good at getting through screens, getting over screens. She's got a high IQ. She might not get all the steals and accolades that way as a defender that creates offense from her defense, but those guys that she plays against know that she's been on them for 40 minutes and it's not a fun night by the time they leave. I think the frustrating part for Clarissa is probably she doesn't feel as good doing it, you know, just because of her shins. She has to work a little bit harder, but she's been a monumental for us on the defensive end for the last couple of years. That's the reason why we lead the Big Ten defensively. 
because she's a captain, I look up to her and I listen and just I ask her a lot of questions because when I first came in, my defense wasn't as well as it is now. Still not that good, but um, she was our defensive leader. So I always asked her questions about gap and help side and taking charges and just always listening. I think she's been a great leader this year on and off the court. I think she keeps everyone accountable for what they like need to be doing. And she's a huge heart. I mean, she cares about everyone on the team and she cares about like doing well, making sure everyone else is doing well. Both my dad and my stepdad are teachers. And so I've just going to their classrooms and just, especially like camps and stuff, I really just like working with little kids and I like how their brains think. Both my dads teach at lower income schools and so I really just like that. I just would love to be like an impactful person to someone and I love the classes that I'm in right now. They're really teaching me a lot about how to help students learn and I think that that's just always something that I've been passionate about. She's such a tremendous ambassador for Michigan State women's basketball. She's a great role model. Everybody loves her. She's wonderful with young girls. And I think when you leave a legacy, it does transcend beyond points, rebounds, bringing the ball up the floor, people cheering for you on game night. It transcends into a community. And the fact that she's also a local kid that did so well here and has had such a good, solid career, but more importantly, has really reached out to the people that have in the community that has helped make her who she is today, I think is what makes it really special. And her legacy is, is truly felt. I mean, it's been felt for a long time here because of the connection to her hometown. I think being a college athlete, you learn how hard you can push your body and like where it can go limits that you like had no idea before it could go. And then definitely just like the mental perspective of it, just how crazy your day could be with school and basketball and relationships and everything like that. So it's just been interesting. Like I said, just like a roller coaster. But I think that I'm like most impressed by is how many little girls adore you and how you can be a role model for those girls. I had like a dad come up to me the other day and was just like, I just want to say thank you. Like, you were such a great role model for my daughters and they really love you and all this stuff. And it's just like gratifying to hear that, knowing that you could really be like a role model for someone just by playing basketball. And that's something that I'm definitely grateful for. by Powers on the far left corner. She picks up the bounce, gives it to Mills. A 17-foot baseline jumper rolls around the rim one full time and then falls in. And then Golzinski is stripped by Powers and pick roll picks up the ball. Gives it to Jankowski who takes it into the front court to our right. Jankowski to pick roll, a wide open three and it's in. Bell with the basketball with six to shoot. Bell to the right wing, up to the top of the key Mills. That's a three go and it's in. Becca Mills knocks down a three. She has nine points. Fires it inside, Hines, she goes up with the left hand, no good. Ag battles for the board, gets it, then in traffic, scoops it up and in. Oh, what a play by Brandy Ag! not only to get the rebound, but then in traffic to scoop it up off the glass. With 35 seconds to go in the first half, Hines from the right block underneath. Reverse layup is up and in. She spun it off the window. Michigan State, the inbounds goes to Powers, makes the catch, jumper on the baseline is good. Nice find by Tori Jankoska, up to the top white, crossover dribble, and then her pass is taken away by Tori Jankoska. She pushes it ahead to Pickrell, goes up with the right hand and lays it in. Bounce to Pickrell at the top of the key, over to AG, steps inside the arc, tries the jumper, it rattles around it in. Shots are dropping for Brandy AG tonight. She's got 10. She dribbles to the near left wing, 10 seconds to shoot. Gives it to Jankoska with a bounce. Backs it out, six to shoot. Jankoska left around the screen, five. Jump pass down to a cutting mills. Pumps once, goes up, and banks it in. The Spartans run the pick and roll to perfection, and Becca Mills gets the bucket. Pull in the backcourt, skips it over to the far side, and it's stolen away by Ariel Powers. Four seconds left, Powers backs it out, and the Spartans will drip it out. The Spartans win on the road against the Badgers, 76-66. First of all, the Big Ten is so challenging, you know, top to bottom. It's it's as good as it's been in a long time, and 
Um, there's not a lot of tiers, you know, in terms of like dominating teams and average teams and not very good teams that any team can beat you on any given night, and that's been proven throughout the conference. And I think it says a lot about our kids and their resilience and their focus and attention to detail when they go on the road. So part of those 10 wins isn't just about having a good home schedule, it's about also being able to challenge yourself and go sneak some away on the road, and I think we've been able to do that. Hickrow with the offensive rebound, gives it out top to power, steps up, tries to jump from the free throw line, and it's good. Bell at the top of the key, drives to the left block, working on Bailey, kicks it out to Mills. Top of the key, two is good. Becca Mills knocks down the jumper. Around the perimeter, pick roll down to the left block. Ag makes the catch, drives to the rack, and floats it up and in over Amanda Zowie. That was a strong take by Brandy Ag. MSU looking to extend an 11-point lead. Over to Jankowska, lets a three go, and got it! From the far left wing, Tori Jankowska hits the three. It's her fourth. Top of the key. Down to Hines on the left elbow. Double team, reverse direction, goes up, splits the two defenders, and banks it in off the window with the left hand. And to shoot, up top to Hines, she drives in, kicks out to Bell, left wing three, got it! Big three from Clarissa Bell. <laughs> What's it like playing with Clarissa? It's fun because she is the other senior on the court, and I absolutely love her energy, and I think we just read each other really well. And she always tells me to fix my face. You know, she always makes sure my eyebrows are done in the game and just, like, making sure I look good. So she just really looks out for me, and I just really enjoy that about her.